I'm Peter Raymond. I'm the president of White Pine Pictures. And what has White Pine been known for? Mostly documentaries. I've been making documentaries for 37 years. And uh, some of our best known films are Shake Hands with the Devil, the film that won the Emmy Award and the Sundance Audience Award, the film about Romeo Dallaire and the genocide in Rwanda. We just made a film last year called A Promise to the Dead, the uh, exile journey of Ariel Dorfman, which was shot or shortlisted for an Oscar. We have a new film called Triage, which just played at the Sundance Film Festival last weekend about uh, Dr. James Urbinski and Médecins Sans Frontières. So, and many document. we did documentary series for history television for four years. We did a series called A Scattering of Seeds, which were half-hour films about immigrants to Canada. Mm -hmm. Many, many types of documentaries, and now we're moving into drama. Now, how did you get into the business? Well, I, I'm a child of the 60s, right? So I grew up thinking that we could change the world, and, uh, and slowly it's happening, I think, you know? Uh, uh, many people of my generation and my class at, at high school and university went on to become journalists or filmmakers or writers or actors, people involved in the media in various ways. So I made some films at Queen's University. I was a student there from 68 to 71. I was a student made some student films and um, took them to the National Film Board of Canada. I thought that would be a great place to work. And they gave me a job. I was 21 years old. It was 1971. Uh, things like that happened in those days. I, I got hired as an editor for three months and stayed there for seven years. And what, and you know, looking back on your career, and I know there'll be other career highs in the future, but what has been sort of the, the thing that you felt the most uh, proud of or was a career high for you or? It's like choosing among your children, as they say, you know. I think every film that I make is a career high for me, is a high for me. I enjoy doing everything that I do. It's a lot of fun. And, and because I, the, I think the films are really important. They're films about social justice. They're, they're films that try to make the world a better place. So, you know, I feel when I wake up in the morning that I'm doing something useful. And how do you find those strong characters? Is it you find the story first or you find the characters first? For me, you find the characters first because there are lots of great stories. There are a lot of important issues and things to... It's, it's all about character. Whether it's a Romeo Dallaire or a Ariel Dorfman or a Dr. James Urbinski or the journalists we followed back to Nicaragua, Bill Gentile, whoever it is, the, the, the 52 characters we made films about for our series, A Scattering of Seeds, you know, it's all about character. It's all about finding people who are who are articulate, who are fascinating to watch, who are going through some sort of struggle in, in their lives, and uh, they take you along. Now, when you go to sell a documentary, what kinds of things do you make sure you include in your pitch? You got to have a great character. That's the first thing. It has to have s someone who's compelling and articulate and engaging, and someone you want to watch and stay with for an hour or 90 minutes. That's the most important thing. You have to have a passion for the subject. I mean, I think you can convince a lot of people on helping finance your film just on your own passion for what you're doing because there's so many people pitching so many things. You know, in the end, they choose the filmmaker that they think can pull it off. Uh, the team that you bring around you, you know, the, the cinematographer, the musician, the editor, the sound recordist, that team of people is very, very important as part of the pitch. Uh, you know that you're going to do it in high def. I think that's crucial now uh, for any kind of significant documentary. It has to be shot in, in high definition. And access, it's, you know, it's the, the character, but it's all about access. Can this character that we're following take us into a world that we've never seen before? Take us to places that are fascinating and uncover, you know, secrets. Shine a, shine a bright light into dark corners. That's what I try to do. And then what happens if there's surprises in making the documentary? Well, I'm sure there, you've had surprises. There are usually surprises, and, and, and that's often the best stuff, is the surprises that you don't anticipate, you can never imagine might happen. And curiously enough, if you've got a great character, and you've got great access, and you've got a terrific crew, those surprises will happen. And, and they happen in front of the camera as you're filming, or they happen when you're in Chile, and General Pinochet dies, and suddenly the whole country is in some sort of weird convulsion and we're there with Ariel Dorfman, you know, things like that often happen uh, when you're, I don't know, it's kind of a magic that happens. Does the story really emerge in the edit suite then, 
or do you have a very for, clear focus? When no, for me the story emerges in the, in the edit suite. I'm an editor by background. That was my first love, my first cra craft as a filmmaker as, as, at an ed as an editor. I don't edit anymore because I just don't have the, the time or the concentration to, to sit there. You kind of have to chain your ankle to the editing table, you know, to really be an editor. Uh, but I work with wonderful editors. Michelle Ozer is a terrific editor. She edited uh, Shake Hands with the Devil and, the, and A Promise to the Dead, the Ariel Dorfman film. She's one of the best documentary editors in the world, I'm sure. Wonderful person to work with. And yeah, I mean, I shoot so that I can edit. I think Donald Britton said that, one of the great masters of the documentary film. You just gather material, footage here and there. Some things you plan, some things you set up a little bit. I do anyway. but. Uh, it can be crafted in so many different ways in the cutting room. So if you're advising young uh, filmmakers as you do in terms of documentary, mm -hmm. what advice do you make sure that you give them? What is the one crucial thing? Have a passion for the subject, you know. You can do a lot of different things. Choose very carefully. Choose something that's going to live with you because it's going to be a struggle to raise the money, to make the film, to edit the film. You're going to live with this project for years. Uh, probably two or three years of just in production and financing and distribution and then it'll be with you really for the rest of your life so choose very carefully choose a subject and a character that you you care deeply about and and it'll probably work for you and what kinds of trends are you seeing in documentary making you've been in it for a number of years mm -hmm. what, what have you seen that are changing within the documentary field the big change is uh, is theatrical documentaries people will go and pay money now and sit in a dark theater and watch a, a, a documentary because documentaries now have many of the same production values and story arcs as good dramatic films and they're much cheaper to make usually so uh, it's great. I mean, uh, my son is 17, and I know he and his friends, they're going off to the movies, and they, what film are you going to see? Do you know, if, is it a documentary film? Or, oh, no, we don't know. It's, we just heard it's a good movie. You know, so I think a lot of people now are, are happy to watch documentaries in theaters. That's the biggest change. And, and part of it's technology, right? High-definition cameras are available now and not that expensive. And you can uh, blow up HD to 35 millimeter film, it looks spectacular. And more and more theaters will show a digital projection anyway. They'll, sh they'll, they'll, they'll show a, an HD tape on, on the big screen. And how, you mentioned storytelling, how has the mm -hmm. storytelling changed in documentary? I think filmmakers are more and more aware of the storytelling techniques that have been with us since the Greeks that have been used in Hollywood and, and everywhere else for successful storytelling in a dramatic form and they're using those same techniques in a documentary form you know you need really strong characters that are going through some sort of dramatic event or dramatic change in their life we use a lot of strong music now in documentaries uh, pay a lot of money for music uh, the shooting techniques I think are, are more in line with you know, feature films. A lot of filmmakers now, especially in Europe, they, you know, they switch back and forth between making a documentary and making a, a dramatic film with actors. It, w the documentary is no longer considered the sort of poor cousin of, of the feature film. 